everyone in here is an expert on schools. You've all been to school for at least 12 years, except maybe that baby that was out here. And most of you have higher education. So I want to look at these words behind us, like clear expectations, data analysis, management. These are words you would typically find in a business memo. However, I found them in the 2008 quality review report um, by the New York City Department of Education regarding the school that I have been working at, the Urban Assembly for Law and Justice. Now, the Urban Assembly for Law and Justice got an A on their report, and they've been held in wide acclaim for getting 90% of their graduates last year into two or four year colleges. And in fact, they've been hailed by the New York Times as the ideal for the Bloomberg Fall School Movement. However, they were mandated to make some changes. So one of the changes that they made that I'd like to talk about today is the last one here, use existing data handling tools to develop strategies and programs to predict and track student progress across their time in the school. So you're all experts, so you know all about that. But I actually have no idea what that means, but I'll tell you what the ninth grade English class I work at, I work in, did. They created learning targets. And for the last unit we, unit we studied, which was reading a raisin in the sun, there were 19 learning targets, ranging from the first, which was the most heavily weighted, which was the professionalization goal, which graded students on how they walk into the classroom silently, whether they're in dress code, whether they spit out their gum, and whether they started their journal prompt quietly all the way to, to learning target number 19, which is, I understand the concept of the American dream. Now, personally, I'm not sure if I understand the concept of the American dream, but I give much kudos to the three English teachers who created wonderful curriculum and lesson plans to help the students understand how the American dream has been manifested in 20th century America. However, when the marking period was over and all the data was in, we had some discrepancies. And one of them was with this boy, Michael. And Michael's fantastic. And I'll tell you why he understands the concept of the American dream. Because when the students were asked to write reports on what they wanted to be when they grow up, 60% of the students said lawyer, and Michael was the only one that said judge. And he said judge because he said the judges are the people that make the important decisions in the world. But for learning target number 19, Michael got a 70%. And I'll tell you why he got 70%, because I graded most of his papers and I entered most of the data. And Michael got a 70% because his handwriting is horrible. He redefined what it means to have bad handwriting. <laughs> Every paper that he turned in, I had to take off points because I couldn't read it. Now, there are many faculty members in here and students who have read their professor's comments that know that handwriting is not the definition of academic success. However, <laughs> when we looked at the numbers, Michael had a 70%. And the problem with this isn't just that the data analysis wasn't the best thing. It was that Michael, in addition to being um, defined by his demographic and his, his gender and his race, he was now split up into 19 separate statistics. And this is the model that I feel is really not the best thing to be doing to our students in the classroom. However, this business model, the data analysis and the management being imposed into the classroom is hot shit right now. In fact, this is a picture of kids in the KIPP schools, the Knowledge is Power program. Al Sharpton recently said that the KIPP model is the ideal for urban public education. And there was a whole feature on Oprah, and we know how important she is. But the problem with this is that the kids are in school from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. They go to school all year round. There are no summers and there are limited breaks. And they're focused only on college entrance. The statistics speak for themselves. There are children from the South Bronx that get into Princeton and children from the South Side of Chicago that go to Stanford. But school is more about statistics. And if you think about the socialization that these children are getting in these schools, you can only think of what they're learning to be. Now, I learned a lot about socialization when I was at the Urban Assembly for Law and Justice during the inauguration of Obama. It was the most emotional, hopeful, wonderful experience that I've had in a very long time. And it really taught me about the community of the school. However, some of Obama's policies are just reiterations of what we've seen before. A lot of these things are programs that have already been working in the schools. But for the last one, you see the Teacher Incentive Fund, which supports programs for teacher performance pay. Now that's just another example of this business model and this market mentality being put into the classroom. And I can really only imagine what some of the outcomes would be, especially with the problems teachers already encounter, which is the lack of collegiality, and when they don't have a lot of prep time, and in fact, our new Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, he came from the Chicago Public Schools where his job title was the CEO of the Chicago Public Schools. So 
it just gets me to thinking about how important socialization is. School is not only about statistics or learning targets one through number 19 and not about what college you get into. School helps you understand what it means to be a citizen, what are the social norms of society, and really what it takes to have a fulfilled life. And I hope that we can create a system of education that really focuses on the whole student instead of just some statistics. Because at the end of the day, it is not just business. Thank you.